Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and you're very welcome to the July Garden Tour. Now it's been really hard to make this video this month because we've had so much rain and when it wasn't raining it was really dull and then when it wasn't dull it was just really windy so the odds were completely against me. So today anyway it was dull and it was windy and I went out to do some weeding which is what you see in front of you the evidence of. The sun came out and I thought wow this is my chance near the end of July I'm going to get the camera and run around the garden ever so quickly before the weather changes. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a quick garden tour and have a look at what's looking good at the moment. Come with me why don't you? Our first porthole today is the long border which is looking really wonderful at the moment and I think we're going to start with those tall tall lilies over there and yes it's lily season at Dwensa and the lilies have done so much better this year than they did last year because of the lily beetle. I'm not really sure why the lily beetle has hit less this year but I think it's down to persistence and the fact that I kept picking them off whenever I saw them and thankfully that seems to I mean I still have them but I have them less and that's great. Now the lily we're looking at here isn't one I planted this year as somebody asked. It's one that I have no ID for but it's a really really tall one. I think we're looking at six foot and all my lilies they all grow this tall swinging past the lilies again and over this way we can see some things that are looking really really good at the moment not least of all that tall bush on the right there which is Cotinus grace now Cotinus grace is generally grown for her very very large leaves and they look amazing when the sun gets behind them. Over here I love how that very tall pink Japanese anemone has grown extra tall because it's being shaded out and it's up there right in Grace's leaves and the pink just looks super against the dark leaves. The white flower on the left there is a phlox and again no name. <laughs> I can tell you though from where I'm standing at the moment the scent from those lilies is just fabulous. They're just to my right. You can hear the bees busy doing their work at the moment and a gentle breeze and it's shaping up to be a beautiful evening. Steeper Tenuissima is that grass there on the left which just catches the sun and we have the first of the dahlias coming into flower. They've been a bit late this year which is disappointing but always welcome and this particular one is called Pooh, I guess after Winnie the Pooh and it's wonderful to see the insects loving plants like they do this one. Just to the left of that dahlia we, I don't know if you can see it, right there slap bang in the middle there is another dahlia opening and Alstroemeria oriana which needs a spot of deadheading at this stage. That's the glorious orange Alstroemeria there at the front, the grass on the left and of course the blue hydrangea behind. But let me show you what this tall plant just behind the Alstroemeria is. Now this is a perennial sunflower called Loddon Gold and I love double flowers so this one <laughs> it's right up my street. The light is a bit out and in this evening but I'm just so glad to have the good light and be able to show you off this border because I was beginning to despair of doing a July garden tour. This border has looked amazing and I'm so delighted with it and when you think that this was completely planted up just two years ago, 
less than two years ago. Okay, the trees and the bushes didn't go in new, but all of the perennials that you see certainly did. And now just swinging a bit around to the left to show you the shadier section here underneath the fig tree, which has a completely different feel to the planting. So if we go in here, then we see ferns, hostas, podophyllums. And I'm really quite pleased with how this is shaping up as well. We have in the background there some Veratrum, Veratrum nigrum, and it is sending up a tall flower spike. So it has glorious leaves, which the slugs have left alone, which is always good. And then a tall flower spike that goes up and up and up with these kind of chocolatey brown flowers. A bit hard to see in here. Another plant worth mentioning in this shady area is the Japanese painted fern. So for those of you who keep asking me about ferns, this, this one is definitely one of my favourites. I absolutely love it. And here we are just looking back on the main body of this border that we've just talked through. And I'm so pleased with how it has turned out this year. I said that already, but <laughs> yeah, I am. Uh, it just has a collection of my favourite colours. I love the dark contrasting colours rather than, you know, subtle complementary ones. And I think this border has real zing and shape and texture and movement as well. So yeah, I'm happy. And as you can see in the far distance there, the likeness is still going strong. So that's that kind of silver cloud over there. I've made a separate video just about that and it's, it's still proving its worth. Okay, so the weather is changing fast, a very changeable day. And for fear of rain and a wet camera and me kind of having to shout over wind, we're gonna take a quick troop up there and see what we can see. Yeah, that fatsia on the left is still <laughs> waiting to be removed. Grrr. So moving on up the garden, we came from down there on the left. I just wanted to show you how well the Crocosmia is doing this year. Not so much how well, but for how blooming long it's flowered. Because usually Crocosmia lucifer is a flash in the pan in terms of flowering. But this year, it's just, I mean, I haven't even counted how long in terms of weeks it's been in flower. <laughs> but it's been ages. And of course, gorgeous, gorgeous flowers that anybody is happy to have in their garden. Look at them, aren't they just amazing? Really, really pretty things. And actually, I don't know if you can see behind, but I see one of those Veratrum nigrum in flower, the one that we couldn't see properly in the shady area. And this one is in sun, which isn't right, but it's in flower. So let's go and have a close up of the flowers. So there it is on the left, kind of doing a bit of an old dance in the breeze. And let me just see if I can hold it steady that you could see the flowers. I think we can't go in any closer at this stage because it's quite, the light is fading and the camera will lose focus if I try and do that. But yeah, you get the idea, pretty. So leaving behind the cherry tree circle and Crocosmia lucifer, the Veratrum was just on our right there. We head on over to the section of the garden that used to be the rose garden, but as you can see, and ever since you've seen it, it's all a bit loosey-goosey with fluttery grasses and lilies. And we're going to have a look at the lilies. Mm, this one, I'm going to put the name up on the screen because I can't remember the names of them all, but beautifully scented and really pretty thing. And I love the way it kind of floats above the grass. And this grass here is Kinacloa rubra, or the New Zealand tussock grass. So goodbye to that lily, and just moving over here to the right, where we have a host of lilies underneath the canopy of 
Tetrapanix Rex that is looking really amazing at the moment, especially against the blue sky. Beautifully scented oriental lilies. I don't grow the Asian types at all. And if I have a name for these, it's going up now on the screen. But perhaps you can see that I have a lot more to come. All there. They're just beginning to open now at this stage. Oh, they smell good. So, Lily on the left, we're now going to head up this way. So, that's where we just walked up. I'm just giving you a little kind of pan of how the garden is progressing. And over there is, I guess, where we've come from in terms of the long border, etc. Smell of the long shadows. Did you spot my pussycat down here? Nah, it's not real. So we're going to turn around to the left now. And that's the direction we're going in. As you can see, I have a lot of very deep yellows at the moment. This one here on the left is Talikia, I think. The name is going up on the screen anyway. And I like it. It has a kind of informal aspect to it. And amazing big, big leaves. And over here behind it, we have the Ligularia. And now... We have come into the area where I was working yesterday and that's what that big earthy patch on the grass is all about. And the thing that really jumps out at us here in this newly planted area, and I'll tell you why in a minute, the thing that really jumps out is that gorgeous miniature red hot poker, or should I say orange hot poker. So just look at these and aren't they doing fabulous? Well, these are the ones that we divided a while ago. I made a video about it, Poco something or other, and they have just gone from strength to strength in here in the border, making that gorgeous orange juice sunny splash that just wakes me up as I walk around. So this section has been newly planted and this is the <laughs> result of working here yesterday. And I made a little clip yesterday, which I'll insert here now to explain why. And here's what was going on not very long ago in this bed when I came in to weed it and made a startling discovery where that fork is there. I'll show you in a minute. And it has resulted in a big plant coming out. It's an Actia, but just one that self-seeded, one that I grew from seed myself, so it wasn't very precious. And here, down at the base, can you see the reason why I've pulled this plant out? It isn't immediately obvious. So these are the, excuse gloves, these are the leaves of the Actia. And if we look carefully, you can see there's something in here at the base. Now that's ground elder and it's something you really don't want to have in your garden and you have to take it out and get all the bits of root. So this I've been battling with in this border for only a very small amount of it but I've been battling with it for a couple of years now trying to take it out completely when I see it and this time it's gone in under this big plant and it was either you know try and take it out and definitely end up leaving some of the roots in or just take the whole blooming thing out so that's what I did. Now if this plant had been important or expensive then what I could do is lift it out and put the roots in a bucket of water and loosen them and then do a kind of surgical removal of the ground elder roots 
cut the whole plant back to the base and replant it and keep it well watered or actually better still replant it in a pot and keep an eye on it to make sure I got all the ground elder out before reintroducing it to the soil but because I am not really fussed about this plant yeah that's the end of it it's going out so I now need to finish weeding in here and find something nice to put in there in the place of the plant I've removed yeah, I'll enjoy finding that. Okay, so our next port of call is just over here. And I've also been working on the left, which I'll show you. So in here, in this really kind of shady area, is where I was working. And I don't know if you recall, but in early spring, there is a variegated hakisha that flowers in this particular section. And I divided it, and I divided it into 16 pieces, which I promptly replanted in here. So I am waiting for a fabulous display in spring. Doesn't look anything now, but it'll be amazing. Did you spot the arasima over here? Just there. I have lots of arasima. I grew them all from seed. And now we're going to head off down here where I have a couple of things to show you. And first up we have this glorious hydrangea which is in full flower at the moment. And just to its left we have an angelica. Now I grew purple angelica in this border years ago and ever since then I've had seedlings pop up but they were usually green so I weeded them out. But this one it, is, it has a lot of green about it, but the purple, red stem and flowers are fabulous. So here's a close-up of the umbelliferous flower of this angelica, which I really like. And actually, you know what? It's quite similar in appearance to that of the hydrangea. Yeah, I think they make good companions. And just a little bit further along, blue and muted red turns into bright red and orange. So let's have a look at that. And over here we have the tiger lilies just coming into flower. And these have fabulous orange flowers. Unfortunately, the only one that's in bloom is kind of hiding itself from us. I wonder, can I show it off better by disturbing the lilies there we go and then pop them back but one thing that's really interesting about this plant is the fact that it grows bulbils on its stems and if I go in and pick one off then these can be used to grow new lilies and in fact that's how I got all these lilies to start with a friend gave me the bulbils and I grew the lilies from there otherwise I guess they just fall down onto the ground and make new plants Lobelia tupa is looking fabulous this year as well and has taken up a very large space in fact I had to pull it out of the hydrangea at the back early on. I'm not sure I got all of it so I hope the hydrangea will survive but it is looking fab. And here's just a bit of a close-up of what those claw-like flowers look like. Really really pretty and yeah kind of exotic too. On the other side of the border we have well we have some things looking good as well. Not least of all, that purple leafed hydrangea in there on the right, flanked by the phytolacca, the variegated phytolacca, which is the one with the scream, cream splodges. But I want to have a look at the Watsonia, which is further up on the left. Now, Watsonia is a South African bulb that is apparently hardy in Ireland. Perhaps they not all are, but this one certainly is and it makes a gorgeous splash of orange. Gorgeous flowers and just beside it here 
we have my Sino Calicanthus Hartledge wine, which has decided to give me a second flush of flowers, which is the first time ever. And actually, what it's done this year is started growing really, really big leaves. So <laughs> these are the leaves, and like they're massive, whereas before the leaves were just kind of normal sized. So I have no idea what this plant is going to do. <laughs> I'm kind of a little bit scared that it doesn't have enough space. But certainly a second flush of flowers is a very, very desirable thing. Veronicastra album there. The white one. Really, really pretty. And Empress Wu over there. And actually, let's take a little jump down that path there. On the left, we have Agapanthus queen mum, which I still have in a pot. And on the right, that big succulent thing there is Knifophia nor the eye. So a red hot poker with amazing foliage. So there is Empress Wu, desperately needing a deadhead some hostas underneath the tree and you may recall this kind of woodlandsy area I planted up in spring with I put some trilliums in here and then just behind it we have my Milano Salinum forest which was looking absolutely amazing and enormous this year but I've cut off all the tops and they do look a bit sad, but I really didn't want that volume of seed going into the soil. I have enough trouble as it is. <laughs> so we're nearing the end of our trip now because, as I said, changeable weather. But just, we're up here by the greenhouse. And actually what I should have done this evening was record the greenhouse, or the green border update, which is this border here because it's looking great, but you know, there's only so much you can do. <laughs> anyway, so I will talk more about this border in that video, in the July edition of that video. Needless to say, Lily's looking amazing at the moment. Really, really tall lilies in three places in the border. And the scent is just fabulous. But what we're going to do is we're going to head on over just here, just for our final roundup. And uh, doesn't the greenhouse look inviting? I can tell you I've been spending so much time in there lately and I have some amazing plants which I want to share with you as soon as I can because everything is looking fabulous. But today what I was doing was not working in the greenhouse, I was working just over here. And people ask, how come you've got no weeds in your garden? Well, I don't have no weeds in my garden. I constantly have weeds in my garden and I constantly weed. And basically you just have to keep at it and get out there a couple of hours every day and just try and get to grips with them, especially when there's so much rain. It's just constantly there. And rain makes plants grow, but it also makes weeds grow. The Hedicium are looking really, really beautiful at the moment, very leafy, and I expect flowers soon. And down below, we have Roscoa over on the right there, looking really nice. The small purple one, uh, we have the Toad Lily on the left, which I think I have just missed its flowers. And then we have my progress down here. <laughs> which includes removing branches off the gorse bush behind because always the surrounding countryside will try and invade your borders. So I think this hydrangea is a fitting place to finish my garden tour today and just wrap up and put my tools away and go in for a cup of tea. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this quick garden tour even if the acoustics weren't the best and if you did if you like the garden tours then check back for more coming your way soon thank you as always for watching and i will see you on the next video bye <laughs>